We're back to the Neil Haley Show and also uh, the Love Is Celebrity Podcast. I'm excited to welcome from Kim Sorrell, author of Love Is. Kim, how are you? And I know you're excited about your guest, and our guest, and I'm excited about the film because I'm a huge fan of George Foreman. I mean, again, he's a gentle giant like myself, who's 6'10", Kim. So this is kind of like, you know, I'm a little taller than George, but I, I always loved him as a boxer. Yeah, right. What a classy guy, right? So uh, with an interesting life. So yes, Neil, I'm doing great. Good to see you. And I am very excited about our guest, George Tillman Jr., who is a wave maker, a groundbreaker. I am so impressed, George, with your resume, the things that you have done. You have uh, done some things to really pave the way for some incredible films uh, that are um, wonderful for the black community, even though I hate to say they're films for the black community, but some of the films you've done, certainly that's the, you've drawn so much traffic from that, but I feel like we're turning a corner and things are becoming more for everybody. And you've done just some incredible things. This George Foreman, obviously, I mean, everybody's interested in George Foreman and his career and, that had to be an experience, but I'm so curious about you because here you are, this Chicago guy, I'm from Michigan, Midwestern, and uh, won some awards. You've just, you've just done it. I'm just so impressed with everything that you've done. Uh, the stories that you've portrayed, you know, just talking about real people and real lives and, and making people feel like they're part of the story. So welcome, welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you for having, having me. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So this, what it, what's what been big for you? Like, I'm just curious. I mean, it, just because you've done so much and so much good and uh, tearing down walls and the first of this and the first of that, which should have happened years ago, but you made it happen. And uh, what's what do you consider your biggest achievement? Like, what's made you just pursue, pursue, pursue? Well, you know, just from watching other, you know, like you were saying, I love telling stories that can really help entertain first, but then help other people. Like I remember when I was a kid, I saw Barry Levinson film Avalon and Avalon was about his family as immigrants moving to America. I was so blown away, even though that family was about the Jewish immigrants. And I just felt like it was very inspiring for me to tell my story with soul food about my family after Sunday dinners, after coming from church, my grandmother doing all the cooking. And even though it was African-American characters, it was fun and it was for everybody. So that's what I always wanted to do with tell stories of, uh, that can move people, get people to change their life and get people to think. So that keeps me going every movie, you know what I mean? So that's how I've been feeling as a director. And what do you think as a director kind of putting your whole vision into it, specifically enough of some of the films you've done, TV shows you've done to kind of put your stamp on it as a director? Because that's the thing that people don't understand is a director takes the writer, producer, everybody put this together and make it a vision, your vision, when it finally goes on, on, on film or on TV, right? Yeah, I think the key is the stamp is what are you trying to say? You know, like the film I did years ago with Robert De Niro, Cuba Gooding Jr., Men of Honor, that was about the first African-American Navy diver. And that whole thing is about, you know, never giving up and really choosing that. And that's what's sitting down with the individual and putting in what is the theme that people can walk away. So with George Foreman, the new movie, I was sat down with George and I was like, wow, change is it's a powerful thing for him. So that was the stamp that I was able to put on this film. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I am so excited. It's coming out very soon. I am sure that it's gonna do great. You've got some wonderful cast going and it is just an incredible story. This man that was an angry guy, right? I mean, he was a pretty angry guy, which maybe as a boxer you need to be, I don't know, but uh, he, changed his life just changed completely it seems like uh, that would be a difficult thing to really grab hold of in just a couple hours on film what, what was that like 
That was amazing because it was true. When I was a kid, I was rooting for Ali in the Foreman versus Ali. I wanted Ali to beat the big, bad George Foreman. And then, like, years later after college, I'm rooting for him to fight Michael Moore. Was yeah. like, he's a nice guy. Is this the same guy who created the grill? You know? And then when I when I sat down with him, it's just that, that experience in Puerto Rico that we have in the movie when he fought – um, Jimmy Young, he, he people say he had heat stroke. George said it was more. I died and I came back. I saw something different that completely changed my life. And that experience was the one thing he said, you got to get right in the movie. That was the most important thing that he wanted to make sure was right. And from there, he started believing in other things other than himself. He became selfish to selfless. So I love that importance of how to change that really made me look at myself but at the same time, I had a great time as a director. I had all these great fights with Ali. I mean, George did some crazy things where he fought five guys in one ring to prove I'm just as bad as Ali. Those are some interesting things about the journey in life, you know? And I think he saw, specifically enough, when he made that change, how Ali loved people. And he had to do the same in a way, but in a, di in a different transformation. George Foreman's way different than Ali in so many ways. What did George tell you about his like what he thought about Lee and also specifically enough did he take any of his charisma later on and and kind of not copy it but emulate some of it I think what was going on was he felt like during the fight he I said were you afraid of Ali he says no I wasn't afraid of Ali I was afraid of Joe Frazier and I said really but you're not Joe Frazier out six times he said, but that was the problem. I was afraid of him. I wasn't afraid of Ali. I really believed that I can get him with one punch. And he just kept going on and on and on. I couldn't believe he was still around in the eighth round. And he said one of the things that he learned, and I have it in the movie, is, is, is a moment right before the fight, George is putting his hand on the ropes, and he looks underneath his arms to look at Ali, and Ali is praying. You know, he's being spiritual. And I think the spirituality is what really woke him up and really saw to get him something to have a pattern in his life. You know, and I think that's something that uh, we all need sort of in our own lives, just to believe, to help, to think better. And I think that's what made him more lovable. A different spirit was just there. I, I love that. I love that. And I, I totally agree. It's uh, a whole different life when you are interested when you're open, when you're seeking, when you know that there's more to life. And early on in this interview, you mentioned the dinners, Sunday dinners after church and and the things of that your family did. And so uh, faith is, is a thing apparently in your family's life and something that you grew up with and then something that's been such a big part of George's life. So how did you how did you relate to all that? I was able to relate when I really sat down and I really started breaking down the movie into the physicality in terms of why things happen. I really wasn't able to figure out and it all came down to one thing. If you really look back when George Foreman fought Ali in 1974, at that point, Ali already lost to Frazier. He already was slower. He was a different fighter. And George is 25, 24, 25 at the time, strong, young, knocked everybody out. How would Ali was able to do that, a belief. And then at 46, George was able to do the thing. You know, and a kid coming from the fifth ward with nothing, his whole family had to eat one burger. They had to share their food. Oh and the teacher wouldn't even look at him because of how he was dressed. And then later, this guy would be the heavyweight champion and a grill guy who's successful. Faith, belief in something. Um, and I have to remind that of myself. Every time I do a movie, I'm like, oh, wow, can I get through this? You know, this movie is so hard. Just keep believing, keep pushing. So that was the thing that came down to one single thing as you just talked about, Kim. You just have to believe and put it into something else that can make you get through this and win. Totally. Now, mm -hmm. Kim has a question she asks all our celebrity guests about love. She wrote a book about love. Go ahead, Kim. Yeah, so, um, Georgia, I was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago, and then four months later, my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and died six weeks after that. And it made me question some things. And the real meaning of love was one of them. It seems to be this, you know, I don't know. I think you put 10 people in a room, you can get two, 10 different answers to what love is. And so I, I lived it out and wrote a book about it, Love Is. And so love is, is huge. Love's universal and love's involved in everything. And I, 
I know it's got to be a big part of your life because uh, your passion has got to come from love, right? Am I right about that? Like, what what is love to you? Love is, to me, and it's something that, you know, I've been thinking about for the last 12 months, you know, because when you make a movie, it takes a lot of people around you. You can't do it by yourself. And love is continuing to open yourself up to other people's flaws, other people's successes, other people's happiness, other people's sadness. And it's a continuing thing. To learn how to forgive is a continuing thing as well. And that's something I've been learning is not let things drag me down. Just happy, be happy. I have to remind myself, be happy where you are. I always look at another director and I say, I want to be better. I want to be like him. It's just like, just be happy what life has provided. Enjoy each day as it comes. It's just hard. Love is taking each day and making the best out of it and making everybody and yourself happy around it. That's how I'm learning every day, you know? That's powerful. I love that. Now, George, what is your goal for the film? What do you want the film to achieve the most? Like you want people to learn most from this film? Well, first of all, I mean, George said he wanted, only reason he wanted to do the movie so people can be able to take his story and see that there's something else out there other than self. And I really, truly want people to come to this movie, April 28th. You know, first of all, it's always hard sometimes. Um, you got these big Marvel movies. So I'm always competing with the big Marvel movies. So everybody, please come out. But when you come out to see the movie, yeah. you will walk away in believing that anything is really possible, no matter how obstacles are. Just keep pushing, keep trying, and keep loving. And I think George became a champion, not because he wanted the material things, it's because he was doing it for the right reasons. That's what I want people to walk away. And the movie is made for all families. You know, I made it, it's PG-13. I made it for everyone to come because a lot of people know George as the grill, but they don't know him as the boxer. Many people didn't know that he was a minister. So mm -hmm. that's a big life. And I really want people to really be surprised. That's fantastic. And, yeah. and so as you said, April 28th, it premieres. Is it going to be in theaters for a while or how's it working? Yeah, it's going to be in theaters everywhere. April 28th, the more people talk and go see the movie, the more it'll stick around. We want to stick around in the theaters before it goes to, uh, you know, the streaming service. So please tell everybody to come see wow. the movie. We appreciate it, George. Thanks, Kim. All right. Thank All right that was a special simulcast, the Neil Haley Show and love is take care, guys.